and we're back with another video about the Owl House. The Owl House is an animated fantasy series that first aired on Disney Channel in the year. Uh, okay, hold on. I'm not going to do a long intro, but I just need to go over just a few little ground rules before we start the list. First off, it goes without saying, this list is my own personal opinion. Feel free to disagree. Although, worth pointing out that I, I have made six video essays and five YouTube poops on this show, so I think I know what I'm talking about. Maybe you should listen to me. So for something to be considered a fight scene, it has to be an actual battle between two or more parties where the ultimate goal is to defeat and or stop the opposing party. So nothing that's just like a friendly competition like Grudgeby or Flyer Derby or the Bonesboro Brawl, because those aren't like life or death battles. Well, I mean, maybe they are, but like, it still doesn't count. A fight scene does not necessarily need to have that super fluid animation that the show is known for doing during its fight scenes. I mean, it might help it get higher on the list, but it's not a requirement to be on the list. And conversely, just because a scene does have fluid animation does not necessarily a fight scene make. Like, I mean, obviously stuff like the, the kiss in Clouds on the Horizon isn't going to count because that's just... That doesn't make any sense. Why would? And finally, and possibly the most controversial rule, is that uh, the final battle from Watching and Dreaming is not going to be eligible for this list. After a lot of deliberation, I kind of realized that that fight is so insanely over the top and epic that while I don't necessarily think it deserves the number one spot, I feel like putting it anywhere other than the number one spot is a, just a massive disservice to it. So uh, I've decided to completely veto it from the list. I suppose you can kind of consider that uh, a, like a huge honorable mention if you want. All right, anyway, let's get started. So, believe it or not, my original pick for the number 10 spot here was actually Hunter vs. Kikimura in Hunting Palisman, which is a crazy thought now because that's such a nothing fight. I suppose it did kick off Kikimura's insane paranoia and vendetta against Hunter, which is an aspect of our character that I really did like, but the fight itself is, is nothing more than just like a really short tussle. I guess I was kind of lost for a number 10 spot for a while. I had the other nine laid out ages ago, but I, I didn't really know what to put here. That was until I rewatched the entire show and I got to the episode Reaching Out. It's, it's funny, in an episode that had a lot of fighting, none of which would obviously be considered for the list for the reasons that I just said, I had forgotten that there was a big battle at the end of that episode that definitely could be. So, number 10 is Warden Wrath versus Luce, Eda, Amity, and Alador. What the heck happened? I, I added fire bee honey to the blabber serum. You changed the recipe? A pretty good fight that demonstrates the benefits of working together as a team. It starts off with Ida trying to fight him on her own, and that doesn't work. Alador tries to use his abomination on him, and that also doesn't work. Amity tries to come in and help him at first, but he just moves her out of the way. It isn't until all of them come together that they actually are able to stop Wrath. It's almost like you can't handle some things all on your own, which, you know, is kind of the message of the episode. Funny how that worked out. And it's just a very great moment between Amity and Alador when she comes back in to help the second time. I'm making my own choices from now on. But you're welcome. And then the two of them join together to make one big abomination creature, and then there's that just that little moment where he glances back at Amity and smiles. It's, it's, it's great. Yeah, good scene. And I can't believe I almost didn't include it on the list. So season one of The Owl House is a little up and down. I'd say the first five episodes are pretty good, the last five episodes are amazing, and then everything in between is just, uh, it's okay, mostly. But I definitely feel like episode five, Convention, is the first episode that really shows not only what this show can do, but what it wants to do. And that is very well demonstrated in the fight between Ida and Lilith. This being basically the first proper fight we ever got, and it's a damn good one to start off with. And yes, this, this does count. This wasn't the planned competitive witches duel between Luce and Amity that turned to shambles when it was revealed that they both cheated. This is an impromptu fight that broke out after that between these two sisters. And speaking of which, I, I really love how during this fight is when we have this scene between Luce and Amity connecting after both being used as puppets for Ida and Lilith how they're just quietly sat on the floor in the shadows in the corner of this building. And then we cut to Ida and Lilith's huge elaborate battle in this massive arena. It's, it's really clever how that was done. And as for the fight itself, I mean, the animation is stellar. The music is this tense orchestral piece. It's really good. I, I love how Ida just summons a giant hootie and then just slightly smaller hooties come out of that. I mean, it's, it's pretty clear that Ida is just enjoying herself here while Lilith is the one that's actually angry. 
shown best when Edith just starts resorting to cheap tactics, like having Albert just start pulling on Lilith's hair. And then when it looks like Lilith has the upper hand, Edith just gets her with a sob story about her curse weakening her, which, you know, while somewhat true, is very clearly just still another cheap tactic of Edith's. Overall, yeah, really great scene and a great showcase of what's to come for this show going forward. I just had to see my sister for possibly the last time. Ida, I... It's been fun, but let's call it a draw! After everything we've been through, I can't believe you're still underestimating me! Jumping forward quite a bit to the tail end of Season 2, we have Luce vs. Ida from O oh Titan Where Art Thou? Like I said in my review, this isn't one of the better fights, but it's probably the one with the most emotional weight to it. I mean, nobody actually wants to see these two fight each other. I mean, they don't even want to fight each other. But as I said, this is right at the end of Season 2, and the Day of Unity is right around the corner. Ida has no plan and virtually no hope. All she cares about is keeping Luce and King safe even if that means sending her away. But Luce is determined to not let her do that. And so the two of them reluctantly have to kind of battle each other a little bit before they're both captured at the end anyway. It's not a particularly long battle, but it, it works for what it is. And the music definitely captures the tone perfectly. I like that Luce uses a light glyph on Ida at one point. I mean, it may not stop the Albies like it used to, but it certainly holds Ida back a little bit while she's in her harpy form. Also, I like that Albert doesn't really know who he's supposed to be helping in the battle. It's a dire situation for everybody involved here. So I still really love that this episode ends on a surprisingly hopeful note. Seriously, the last few minutes is genuinely one of my favorite endings to any episode. Rain, why didn't you tell me anything? I could have helped. Is it so unbelievable that I wanted to keep you safe? But in typical Ida fashion, you're not going to stop until you make things right. I guess not. Are you okay? Did you see Bellows? Oh no, just my imagination playing tricks again. Okay, yeah, we may not have the final Bellows fight on this list, but at least we got a Bellows fight and some season three representation at that. I have gone over some of my issues with Bellows coming back after King's Tide, but you know, that's all water under the bridge now, right? Anyway, this fight is pretty darn good. I like how it starts off pretty slow with Luce not really wanting to hurt Hunter, but then it just kicks into full gear the second Bellos goes on the offensive and Amity, Willow and Gus all swoop in to help with some absolutely awesome animation to boot, presumably animated by Spencer Wan, given his name is on one of the gravestones. Wait, wouldn't that mean he's dead? Speaking of which, uh, Hunter dies at the end of this fight. I mean, sort of, he's, he's brought back by Flapjack, obviously. But Flapjack dies at the end of this fight, which, uh, yeah, that's a real gut punch right at the end. <laughs> but like I've said, it is very cathartic to have Hunter fight him off as soon as he starts to hurt Flapjack. Also, I like how V also chimes in to help as she is a basilisk and she can drain Bellos' magic. That's cool. Although, doesn't Bellos use glyph magic like loose? Like, I thought basilisks were like allergic to that or, or something. I, I don't know. Whatever. I, I, it doesn't matter. I'm not trying to point out plot holes here. But, I mean, it's worth it either way because it gives us this one frame of V, which is just uh, everything. <laughs> And one more thing that I'd be remiss to not mention here is the music for this whole section. Oh my god, have you ever actually listened to the music here on its own? Because it is, is something else. I mean, seriously, the way it like builds up and then just like kicks into high gear is... It's like something out of a horror game, it really is. Like, go, go to the Thanks To Them music suite over on the uh, Andrew Morgan Smith music YouTube channel and then listen to Danger Deep Water in its entirety. It's... Whoa. <laughs> this is for the good of your souls. You'll thank me later. With the Emperor's favor, we'll live like royalty in the new world. Crowns and everything. This is too much. 
even for you. Yeah, even though this fight starts off as kind of just a thing between Alador and Odalia, it pretty quickly just turns into a fight against Kikimura, so that's what I'm going to be labeling it as. It still impresses me just how much was crammed into the episode Clouds on the Horizon, and yet it doesn't feel overstuffed at all. And we got an awesome climactic fight at the end of it too? I guess maybe that was to make up for that less than stellar one earlier. Obviously the big draw to this whole scene is that very clever subversion that Luce and Hunter had actually swapped places the entire time. And yeah, that was really good. There's little hints all throughout, and I know that some people did put it together before it was real, but it definitely caught me off guard. But the, yeah, the fight itself is entertaining as well. Like most of the Hex Squad fights, it does a really good job of showcasing all of their respective magic types. You know, Amity's Abomination Magic, Willow's Plant Magic, and Gus's Illusions, which, like I mentioned before, is extra impressive here, given that he's keeping the Hunter and Loose Body Swap illusion going the entire time, and he performs this Blackout illusion on top of that. I mean, geez, it's no wonder that he's exhausted by the end of the episode. Jetpack actually works! <laughs> uh, oh, the jetpack actually works. Jim is off limits. Gray's orders. Gray may be head witch, but I'm still principal. It'd be wise to let me through. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. I flippin' love Labyrinth Runners. It is still my second favorite episode behind Knock Knock Knocking on Hootie's Door. And this fight scene is definitely a factor in why. This one would definitely win the award for most participants in a fight, and it is really cool seeing all the Hexide students using their respective skills and different magic types. And the thing that I love most about it is just how neatly it all flows together from one person to the next. Like, there's no sudden jump cuts to somebody else or anything. It's all organically following from person to person, you know? And it's kind of cool how it sort of starts off on Hunter and then circles back to him right at the end, too. And yeah, I mean, it still kind of baffles me how Basha is just strangely absent for most of this episode. Like, it would have been cool to see her here using her potion magic. I mean, I, I'm pretty sure that For the Future is actually the first time we ever see her doing that, because that was the first time that it even registered to me that she was in the potion track. I mean, she she has been since the start, but you never actually see her doing potion magic. It's, it's very weird. Anyway, I'm getting off topic again, whatever. Really fun, upbeat scene with great music to accompany it. And yeah, I love how it ends on this really campy pose of Amity and Willow. <laughs> Speaking of music, I don't think that there is any single piece that's more iconic than Rain's Rhapsody slash Eda's Requiem, whichever one it's called. I mean, it's no wonder it's used in the show as often as it is, and this scene really shows why. I mean, like, just listen to this. I mean, I know that this one isn't so much of a fight fight compared to the other ones on this list, but, like, I could not include it. It is just such a profoundly moving scene that I, I struggle to really put it into words. It obviously means a lot more in the context of the episode, with Ida feeling like she's no longer needed in Luce and King's lives, as they both have real parents. So much so that she's willing to sacrifice herself so that her and Rain can stop the Emperor. I mean, that is until uh, Rain makes the choice to stop her from doing that. Ida, do you have kids? Uh... But they're not mine. Mine. Oh, it doesn't matter. They both have real families to return to. If you've never watched this show before, first off, I, I don't know what you're doing here, but let's just say hypothetically, like, you've gotten this far into the video and you've seen maybe one single image from the Owl House. Chances are, it was this one. Enchanting Grumfright is quite possibly the most iconic episode of the entire show. I mean, it's the thing that got me interested in the show in the first place. I remember the day this episode aired. I mean, it really seemed like everybody was talking about it. It was kind of groundbreaking stuff. I mean, I, I don't want to play into that whole, like, Disney's ever-growing list of first gay characters thing, but to say this wasn't a big deal at the time would be a lie. And yeah, I, I mean, I know it's more of a dance than a fight, but I mean, if I can count the Eda's Requiem one, then I can count this. 
And really, like, what more is there to say that hasn't been said by dozens of people already? Myself included. The animation is great, the music is iconic. I mean, I, I just, I love it. I love all of it. I love Amity and Luce combining their magic together to create an abomination that gets eaten by Grom and then sprouts plants inside of it, creating this huge pink blossom tree. It's just, it's all great. It, it's a great climax to what is definitely one of the better episodes of season one. So, who did you want to ask out? Oh, it's, it's not important. Come on, Adolin. You would be late when I need you most. And my final pick from season one is Ida versus Lilith. Again, but, you know, the way more dramatic one from Agony of a Witch. In fact, it, it wasn't until putting this list together that I actually noticed some interesting parallels between these two fights. I mean, in convention, Ida wasn't really taking it all that seriously, but here, well, anything but. <laughs> the second she shows up to the duel, she doesn't say a word, just instantly starts fighting. I mean, barely even letting Lilith finish her sentence. And Lilith is actually the one who starts resorting to more cheap tactics here, like using Luce as bait to distract Ida and forcing her to redirect her shots and stuff like that. And yeah, I've said it before, but I still get a kick of how awesome this one exchange is. It's sad to see you slowing down, sister. Tell me, is it the curse? Yeah, you're dead. Maybe it is the curse, but then how pathetic are you that you can't best me at my worst? This whole fight is just breathtaking. The animation's probably as good as it had ever been at this point, and the entire battle is actually pretty long compared to most of the others. Also, I love the few shots of the Coven Guards just watching in awe. That's, that's pretty funny. <laughs> I mean, yeah, the whole Lilith accidentally blurting out that she was the one who cursed Ida is, is, is a little dumb, but it doesn't take away from the sheer hype of this fight. It is amazing. But ultimately, it does end with Lilith winning as she, again, uses Luce to force Ida to save her, thus using up all her magic and turning into the Owl Beast. And it very quickly becomes possibly the bleakest ending to an episode in the whole show. But nevertheless, absolutely amazing scene and definitely a big highlight from the first season. Leave, human! Edelin is finally with her family. Her real family. Go back to your world. This one is ours. But while that last fight was undoubtedly a very strong contender for the number one spot, there is still one that I like a little bit more. What is, in my mind, the best fight scene of the whole show? And some of you may have already worked out which one it is. You know, you were right. We do have a lot in common. I grew up thinking that everything was an opportunity to justify existing. But there are people out there who won't make you feel worthless. You just have to let yourself meet them. Amity versus Hunter in Eclipse Lake. A, a still kind of underrated episode, in my opinion. I mean, I underrated it the first time I watched it, but it's really almost flawless. Unlike this fight scene, which is, there is very little that I could say about all the things I love about this fight without repeating myself, so I guess I might as well just repeat myself. The animation is ridiculously fluid. I love Hunter rapidly teleporting about the place. I love the bullet hell thing he creates at the start, knowing that the magic bounces off the walls in these caves. I love Flapjack still protecting him, even though he's been very hesitant to even want him around. I love the giant fist thing he summons, just like in his first appearance in Separate Tides. I love King helping out in the fight, and then he, he just gets his horns impaled and gets stuck. I love the way that Amity is in constant control of the Abomination Goop, trapping Hunter with it at the start, picking it up, deflecting the beams with it, using it as a shield, and then morphing it into a fist. And I still don't know if it was intentional or not, but when she punches him, it looks like a little A flashes up on the screen, encasing him in a ball of it, and when he breaks out, she just immediately pulls it back to soften her landing before turning it into a blade right at the end. It's all so perfectly choreographed and executed, and the music is intense as hell.
I, like, I've listened to it so many times on its own now. It's so good, it's, it's no wonder why it was reused later on in For the Future. And yeah, I do think that a lot of the enjoyment out of this fight comes from seeing these two kind of fan favorite characters battle each other finally. And also Amity's super quick thinking to break the key at the end before handing it over to Hunter so that she still got some of the Titan's blood. I mean, a lot of the subsequent events of the series couldn't have happened if she didn't do that right then. I wonder if Luce ever did get her a new glove. But yeah, nothing more I can really say. Absolutely spectacular fight. I wouldn't change a thing. So, that's it. That's the end of my list. Thank you for watching, everybody. Let me know what your number one would be. And if there was any that you think I should have put on the list, but I didn't. And uh, yeah, I don't really know how to end off this video, so... Here is the Amity and Hunter fight, poorly vocoded to Gangster's Paradise. I made this two years ago. Okay, it was it was a trend then. Here is the Amity and Front Amity and Funter. <laughs> I mean, that, I'm, that's going at the end. That's going to be an outtake I'm putting right at the end. <laughs> Funter. <laughs>